Hey yo, heavy crew. I'm Ez, and with me today is the legendary Joey Cape. You may know him from such bands as Lagwagon, Bad Astronaut, and Me First and the Gimme Gimmies. Thanks for joining me, man. Hi. It's really good to have you here today. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little frazzled because I've been working on a an essay about gun control in America with my daughter for college. And you want something to fry your brain? Try that on for size for a while. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a morning for me too. And your, yours is just getting started, but mine's been coffee, lots of coffee. Oh yeah. Tell me what's worse though, doing homework when you were a child or doing your child's homework? <laughs> way, way worse to do it when you're a child. Here's why. I'm 56 years old now, you know, and my daughter's only 18. I mean, I'm kind of an old dad. So it's been so long since I had to write these kinds of things. And again, I mean, I should say, though, I'm not writing it. She's writing it. But I'm just kind of helping her because she's just in her first year of college and she went to a public high school in America, so she didn't have the greatest uh, education. And a lot of it is just kind of lending a little bit of my memory to her of proper format and stuff like that. But um, but it's also fun because she's writing a lot of political things. And, you know, there's, not, there's nothing in my life to cause me to do that. I'm not an activist necessarily. And, I, you know, so... This is way more fun for me. Plus, it's it's a lame excuse for me to spend time with my kid, you know. So I, I kind of love it. She's suffering. <laughs> She's definitely like, Dad, we got this. Let's go. Come on. I got things to do, you know. Yeah. But did she ask you for your help? Yes. Which, you know. So she put herself in that position then. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not pulling a helicopter parent thing at all. <laughs> I, I'm very laid back about that, these things, but... Just quietly remind her these are the consequences of her actions. <laughs> yeah, she asked for my help. Yeah, she may be getting more than she bargained for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Like as I mentioned before, you lend your name to a bunch of notable bands, but you're heading out to Australia in the new year. Yes. Um, with me first and the Gimme Gimme. So you guys are doing like a buttload of shows, including one on a cruise ship. Is that right? You know, I don't know. <laughs> just someone will tell you where to turn up and when that's it yeah <laughs> that's what i do i mean it's more fun you know i've for many many years i i kind of wait till i get the itinerary yeah i you know there are people behind the scenes i suppose that are setting these things up and i have a good time no matter where we go so i didn't know about the cruise ship thanks i'm glad to, i'm glad to hear about it you, you know what? releasing any great secret here but i i didn't actually know it's probably in sydney i'm guessing sydney huh yeah it said oh i can't even remember what it was called now but yeah harbor mm. harbor something anyway it looks it sounds like a time <laughs> i mean those things are always kind of cool it depends on how much you like being trapped on a boat with a bunch of drunk people mm. <laughs> yeah and how you tolerate seasickness i suppose yeah and then there's that too you know playing an instrument while you're rocking around like that, while you're moving around involuntarily is a, is a thing too. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I noticed you're getting over to Perth as well, which is unreal because um, those poor buggers, they miss out a lot over in Perth, being the Wild West and all. They do, yeah. But that's great for you guys too because it's a, a great part of the country. Yeah. Are you going to be on a tight schedule or do you have, will you have some downtime while you're over here? I mean, I'm going to because I'm filling in the blanks with solo shows. I, I'm coming out early and playing a few. And then uh, I think the day off, which in Brizzy would have been a day off, I'm going to play a show. And then there was a day off to travel to Perth to the WA. But I, you know, it's it's up in the air. But I might be playing a show on that day as well, which that's really tough. Because you got the early morning, the whole flight. And then like sound check and you grab something to eat and you play. I actually hope that doesn't work out. No offense to anybody. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. that, that one's tough. But no, I don't have, a, you know, every time we come to Australia, usually we have a few days to just kind of hang out, go to the beach. And yeah, that's really nice. You've planned it for like the best time of the year too, like smack in the guts of our summer. So yeah, it's going to be hot. I can't wait. I'm going to be wearing shorts all day long and all night. Like I don't have to put pants on at all. 
Oh, except for on stage, I think. Oh, well, pants are optional. It's the Australian way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you obviously have been out here a bunch of times, so uh, you would know. But a lot of people, I think foreigners wouldn't really understand the distance between capital cities and the touring circuits in Australia is quite different to, say, Europe, where everything's close together. And I, I know the states, you know, are relatively comparable to, to Australia, but there's a lot of nothing in between <laughs> cities here and so yeah it can be grueling i guess like jumping on plane to plane to plane you know to get around like buses just aren't really doable here it's true i did just one tour in the very first the very first time i came to australia i did one tour in a van mm -hmm. and yeah that one was you know it was boring yeah you know a lot a lot of driving but it was also kind of beautiful because I'd never been there. So back then, I wouldn't want to do that now. Yeah. However, getting up every day early to go to the airport to get on a plane, it's just another kind of lame hassle, you know? So <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's not the greatest. But I've, I'll still say that uh, if I tour in the States, I'm usually in a van, maybe a bus if it's lag wagon. And, you know... In a bus, it's fine. You go to sleep and the driver drives at night. So you just wake up in the town more or less, you know, so it's really easy. In a van, it's totally, you know, we have some of those 12-hour drives and stuff. And it, it's, it's a real pain in the ass. But um, you're kind of, from, for some reason in Australia, it doesn't feel as bad because we have these great apartments that you guys have in lieu of hotels. We stay in those little apartments mm -hmm. that have kitchens. And somehow it just doesn't really feel that stressful. Well, that's good. So before I complain, I should say it's actually like a tour that I always look forward to. I would say this touring in the States in a van is way harder. Yeah, okay. Because even though there's more to see maybe along the way, I don't know, maybe I just don't like America. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to edit that bit out as well? <laughs> no. <laughs> Proud of it. <laughs> I, told, I told you what I was writing about this morning. Well, yeah, yeah. Question a few people when you come over here because, yeah, our gun laws are very, very different to yours. Yeah, I know a lot about that. I've never touched a gun in my life. I've never seen one in real life. I know. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, we're in deep, and uh, I don't think there's any real answer. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting, too. Actually, yeah, it's a really terrible subject. I'll just stop talking about that. Right <laughs> yeah, let's not crawl down that rabbit hole. But I enjoy Australia a lot. I always have a really great time there. And even despite the travel, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, it can be, you're a little tired, maybe. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't like party all night, every night, unless you're in your 20s. But uh, it doesn't matter. You know, I have so many friends there. Every town I go to, I have long relationships with people now, and, and it's you know, it's like it's like a series of reunions and dinners and drinks and and gigs. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, I love that. Can't complain. Who have you got um, supporting you both on gimmies and um, your solo stuff when you come over here? Do you know, or is that another thing you'll just work <laughs> out when you turn up? <laughs> I was just waiting for you to finish that sentence so I can go once again. I love it. Just flying on the seat of your pants. I'm telling you, I, I really don't know. I, I, I'm excited to find out because there's, you know. Well, my, I was just curious whether it was old friends or are you going to make some new ones? So, <laughs> Well, you know, in my defense, things are a little different now. I mean, we had these like few years of nothing and we kept almost coming back to life, as you know. Mm. And so we kept booking things that, that in turn got postponed and da, da, da. So this is still kind of part of something that was supposed to happen years ago. So, you know, I mean, just knowing when it is, is an achievement. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I forgot about this tour. And then just only a month or so ago, somebody called me and said, hey, you know, we got you know, Australia with the gimmies. And I went, oh, awesome. You know, that's great. But, you know, I don't have any fucking idea. I didn't even know where we were going until recently. So, you know, but it's pretty much always the same. And usually the bands that open, in one way or another, I've met them or know them. So I'm sure it'll be great. Obviously, you mentioned before you're doing your solo shows as well, just slotting those in, which I think is great because you get that contrast between like, 
you know, getting rowdy on stage with the gimmies and then it's a more mellow sort of intimate vibe with your solo stuff. So yeah. Um, the most recent release is a good year to forget. Yes. And you played all of the instruments on that yeah. record. Will you have anyone accompanying you on stage when you play those solo shows or is it going to be quite stripped back and it's just, uh, just a solo job? There's the drag. Yeah. I have to, I have to admit this all the time. It's, it's, it's something that I, I'm not happy about, but the fact is, um, you know, I don't get paid that well. You know, I don't get paid well enough. What? Musicians don't get paid well? What? This is breaking news. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about solo shows, though. My other bands make great money, and I've not had a real job in a long, long time. I'm not complaining. But when it comes to the solo touring, I've been trying to figure out a way to afford to have a band mm -hmm. forever. I've done it a few tours. It's always delightful. I really dig it because you can still do the stripped down stuff but you can bring other guys out. You can have, you know, a more crescendo, a bigger crescendo, I should say, at mm -hmm. the end of the show. There's all these great reasons for it, especially when you put other instruments on your records, being able to recreate that. Yeah. But I haven't quite figured out how to do that, and especially not in a place like Australia or Japan, somewhere really far away, really expensive. I mean, there's just no way for me to afford to support you know five people yeah that beds beds at night meals all that i just can't do it so no nope, it's just going to be little old lonely me uh <laughs> on stage you know talking about real sad stuff and some funny stuff and uh and and the good news is the silver lining is i actually enjoy it you know i i like playing by myself so it's not a total drag but i wish i could do that especially with the latest record you know and the one before it i those they're full band records. Um, in the case of the last one, there was a pandemic, right? So I had to play all the instruments myself because I couldn't even get in a studio with anyone. But that was awesome too. I, you know, I trained a band a little while ago, uh, so to speak. I mean, that sounds kind of weird, but they're all friends of mine, and we got together and we learned all those songs and we played them, and it felt so good. And uh, you know, I just, I just can't afford to bring them, so yeah oh that's sad but i apologize in advance to people because i do think people get a record and they like it the very few people that get my solo records sometimes they come up to me and go you know i'd really like to have heard the real version of the song and they're just not privy to the information that i know they, it's, they don't know that it's really expensive these days to travel with people yeah well, pick an instrument, learn it, and then they can get up sta up on stage when yeah, you show up. Exactly. <laughs> just put a put a notice out to say like I'm coming to this town on this day. People start learning stuff and jump up on stage. Oh, don't even think that I haven't thought about stuff like that. I mean that <laughs> that is an actual answer to the problem. And you know, it sounds like a good time. No, I, or it sounds it also sounds like a risk, but you know, it is. It's a risk, but it's a fun risk. I mean, I play with dudes in Europe. I have friends that I play with out there. Um, I mean, that's a yeah. thing lots of people do. And traditionally, it was called pickup bands, you know, and there mm -hmm. used to be a, in the old days, like a singer songwriter type guy would tour and have different bands in every town and they got ahead of time their homework. These are like pro guys that could read music, but they'd walk on stage to play and they hadn't even rehearsed and they walk out and there's just these dudes sitting there playing all this stuff. I mean, that's never going to happen again. But, uh, but you know, there's, it's totally uh, realistic to do the thing you're talking about. But, you know, you have to get out there early and, and, and get some chemistry and do it. And also you have to get people to be willing to do even that for no real dough, you know. Mm. So it's kind of a thing. I don't know. But I have talked about that a lot with people, and I have done a little bit of that. So if anybody wants to show up, just remember the only downside is that sometimes at the moment that I play a song, I change the key. <laughs> <laughs> so keep on your toes. Yeah, be on your toes because my voice is weird. <laughs> <laughs> so the most recent album was like a documentation of your experience through 2020. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. That's the way I went about it. Yeah, and you, on top of the pandemic malarkey, you had a bunch of significant stresses that hit you as well. So was that album one of catharsis for you? Absolutely. I mean, I think 
everybody had some cathartic moments uh, in isolation, but maybe most people were isolated with other people. I spent a, a dangerous amount of time by myself uh, for a year. And um, in hindsight, I think it was really, really good for me because I, I live a life where I'm constantly with other people and it's very social and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think maybe deep down inside, I am a bit of an introvert, you know? So there's a lot of things about it that I'll, I will never look back on with uh, any kind of regret. Um, but yeah, that was just, I was, I found myself sort of writing it almost like a diary you know, especially when I had COVID, the original one, the Corona one, it, it, it was really bad for me. I, I'm one of those people who genetically just did not fight well, and I ended up in the hospital, almost died. It was, it was really brutal. Yeah. And so I was sort of like, you know, doing a daily like, holy shit, I bled from my ears today. What the fuck is that? You know, it was a lot of that, but I also kind of did a lot of, you know what? Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll learn how to play piano. You know. I, I, I've always played a tiny bit, but you know, but I should a tiny bit, but I, yeah. And, you know, I'm going to read these books that I always wanted to read that I never read. And I, you know, I tried to build a birdhouse literally. I, you know, I did really funny stuff. Uh, and, and all of it was cool except for the sickness and, and a couple other things that happened, but yeah, I, I kept track of it. And at some point I realized I should just be writing music. It's what I do. And this is a perfect catalyst for that thing is is i don't know about you but for a lot of the time in the beginning it was just like maybe a little bit of shock maybe a little bit of boredom but definitely a lot of just like feeling like i don't know what i'm gonna do like i don't you know i i just kind of feel dumb you know like unstimulated and blah 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 even and i get out and ride my bike in the ghost land and get you know on that in, in the land of no one and stuff like that but you know it's it takes a little while to kind of get to a place where you you psychologically say oh this is kick ass i don't have to work i don't have any worries i can't worry about my finances because i'm fucked you know like the, everybody's fucked you know what i mean like it was almost like a big flat tax happened it's like no one can work and no one could do anything so that was nice. Well, my job required me to work the whole way through. And so uh, I sorry. had that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. There are those of you that still had. To, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it was, uh, but it's interesting to think of it that way because I, I had nothing but work and that nearly sent me loopy because I didn't, I had no outlets and I'm a musician as well. Oh, cool. So I... I had to do the nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. And then there was nothing on the weekends. There was, you know, over here in our part of Australia, we at one point weren't allowed to go five kilometers from our house for one hour of the day. It was crazy. Like, yeah. 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 I remember reading about that and talking to friends of mine that were in it. That's, oof, that's crazy. It was a time and it, and I love that you've called the album a year to, a good year to forget. Cause it, it really when you start to like reflect on it, it's hard to think that that wasn't that long ago, but I think. Yeah. It feels like ages ago, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like, I think a lot of us have pushed it into the background of our try to try to just like move, move on again. But yeah, it's interesting. And at the same time, I'm, I'm interviewing people like yourself and, you know, like I said, I'm a musician as well. So like I'm around my bandmates and, and bands around me and everyone seems to be yeah utilizing the power of music as a form of therapy, I think for what we've all gone through and everyone's experience of the pandemic was so different, mm -hmm. you know, even just Australia, we had different lockdowns. You guys had different situations. So it, it's all relative. Hey, it, absolutely. Well said. And the most remarkable thing you said is that you're a musician too. Where do you live? Where, uh, I'm in Bendigo, which is a little town in the middle of Victoria. So about two hours from Melbourne. What do you play? I'm a singer. You're a singer? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, if you come to the show, let's pick a song and you come sing it. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I mean, I was just thinking about our earlier conversation. I mean, there's no time like the present to get started on figuring some stuff out. Well, this is this is very true. You know, for this boring set of mine. No, really. If you think of something that you would want to sing of mine or whatever, you know, uh, I, I, I really, I, I, it's interesting that what my takeaway from this is going to be to get off. I bet when we get off, I'm going to go. I should probably reach out to some people and see if anybody wants to come up and play <laughs> something. Cause that is more exciting. You know, if you're watching a set part of the way through it, you, you start to like, I don't want to look at this guy with the gray beard. anymore. It's really <laughs> boring to me. Can we get a different human being up there? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting off track. No, here. no, there's no track. Trust me. There's no track with me. I feel like it's, it's that depends on whether people have paid good hard money and to see you or whether they've just wandered in off the street and they're like this sounds okay and then they listen for a little while and then they people's attention spans are terrible these days that's it that's it mine too by the way but yeah i don't know if anyone that's paid to see you would want to see me <laughs> uh no it's always just so cool when something happens you know like especially when it happens on the fly you know when it's kind of just a random i was just about to say the same genuine interactions are really entertaining yeah i love that i love it yeah well i'm with you on all the things you said and i think that was really well said i mean it was a learning period of time you know for mm. most of us yeah i don't regret any of it yeah it's interesting to sit back and think that through our lifetime we've read history books and we've been taught you know these significant periods in history and then to to live through one that we know is going to be talked about for thousands of years is just it's just a bit a little bit mind-blowing really to yeah see. we were we were there we went through this so yeah it's wild that's me just getting off track completely i could go down so i could go down rabbit hole after rabbit i have hole. that effect on people <laughs> <laughs> hey what is it what's behind you is that wallpaper or is it is it one of those one of those digital it's actually the ep cover of my band's record actually <laughs> so <laughs> oh it's yeah. it's so cool <laughs> thank you yeah it's really awesome i was like once you moved i saw that it was one of those screensaver type things oh wow yeah it's an amazing there's somebody you know paint that yeah and our drummer God, talented. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like it. It's powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about your musical projects, though. We're here to talk about you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's what I do. It's what I do. Anyways. I did want to ask, with your musical projects, are you, say, for example, more introspective with your solo stuff and, say, I don't know, more commentative with the band stuff, like Lagwag and Bad Astronaut? How do the musical projects differ? Oh, uh, it's so subtle. Honestly, I, I think for the most part, I just write songs when I'm inspired and, you know, I write music almost all the time. I rarely go through blocks with music, with the composition part of it. The lyric thing is a very different thing for me. It tends to be something that I can only do when I'm really inspired. And sadly, that usually happens in the middle of the night. I wake up and go, and then it's like, well, I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> I know that feeling all too well. Yeah morning writing as well but um but how things differ and it does affect the lyrics in, in the long run uh i think it's just the setting that the song ends up seemingly appropriate for it ends up being you know appropriate for one of these things or i happen to be working on one of these things at the time you know that's that's a big part of it so if I'm working on something for Lagwagon, Lagwagon has its own world, you know, in my head, it, like where it can live and what it can do, what what a song can do. And and so, uh, you know, there's still plenty of variety there, you know, but the scope is limited to the world that that lives in for me. And if it's Bad Astronaut, that world changes drastically. It becomes way more science fiction, you know, esque or something. I feel like I can kind of have fun with it and and I don't have to worry about uh something being you know cheesy or pretentious or or extravagant because that's part of what that band is doing you know we're just kind of doing whatever the fuck we want and just for better or worse yeah. because that's a process thing and then the solo thing maybe is the most intimate of the things uh in every way that's where I feel like this thing that's always important to me which is to be as 
to try to get the closest to my truth. And I'll give you an example. If I write lyrics, one of the most important things to me is that what I'm writing says exactly what I'm thinking. And so I get caught up on semantics and I rewrite things over and over again till the end of the song. I feel like that's what I was trying to say. And I, I did, I used to be really did a poor job at that. But as I get older, I think I'm much better at that. Well, with the solo stuff, I think I, that's where it's the most transparent. So, you know, I tend to, maybe it's slightly more emotional for me. Yeah. I don't know. No, that makes complete sense. And I, I completely relate to the writing, rewriting, writing, rewriting <laughs> over and over until you're happy with the final product, <laughs> even to the point of like being in front of the mic in the studio and being like, hang on a minute, we're going to change this a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Never ends. The editing never <laughs> stops. The editing happens in my head for years after the thing has been produced and put out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, I'm still going oh god i should have said this right there it would have been way more powerful yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know whatever. just like just slide a change in there and see if anyone notices <laughs> i wish i i often have fantasized about you know going back and retroactively changing things but that would come out of my pocket and is it really that is it really that important or are you just being insane you know what i mean there's this kind of like yeah, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you have to live you have to live with a lot. Well, I'm looking at our time and we probably do need to wrap up. So I do like to end with a fun question. Oh yeah. So hopefully hopefully you're ready for this one. So obviously me first and the gimme gimmies is a what Wikipedia called it a super group. Uh, um uh, I'm rolling my eyes for those of you who can't see me. My eyes are rolling. They rolled all the yeah. way out of my head. They just roll that. <laughs> I witnessed it. I saw them. He had to bend over and pick them up again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you guys, uh, you guys do a bunch of covers. By the way, how do you decide what you? No, I'm going to get us on another tangent. But how do you guys decide what songs to cover? It's changed over the years, but it, you know, in general, it's kind of like we hang out and just we talk about songs, you know, uh, Hey, I always thought this would make a cool kind of punk rock song or rock and roll song, a little heavier, the way they give me to it. And, uh, that's really it. And then there's some trial and error, but not much. We don't really rehearse. We don't really, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty loose game, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it was just kind of, you know, different ideas from different people for different songs. And then we get together and we play them. And, and some of the songs, some of the songs just work. Usually can kind of you can kind of tell which ones are going to work in bands. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say too that cover bands are supposed to be loose. They're supposed to be fun. That's the point, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, my question was going to be: if a supergroup were formed to exclusively cover Joey Cape songs from any of your projects, what genre would the band be, and what would the band be called? Oh my god! <laughs> well, that is a self-analysis that i don't think i want to do bonus points who would be in the band oh, <laughs> um i don't know i mean there's so well it depends on what kind of i mean there's so many answers to this question because my mind immediately went to a metal band and i was like i want ronnie james Dio on vocals hell yeah you know he's got to come back to life yeah and uh, you know because he was one of the greatest rock singers of all time yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, can you even imagine songs that you wrote being performed by people that are your heroes and them being in a band together and doing that? That question's way too big for me. <laughs> you know, there, there's, there, are, there are thousands of people that I respect that I would, but also at the same time, the question makes me cringe <laughs> because can you also, can you imagine people that are heroes of yours playing your songs and you're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You don't yeah. have to do this. It's okay. Yeah, it's cool, guys. Like, <laughs> I know that you guys can write better tunes. So, you know, yeah. I, sorry, that's probably not a great answer. It's fine. I don't know if I have one. I'll think about that, though, and then I'll have an answer for you when I see you. Okay, that sounds good. Or, you know, the next time a journalist asks you a stupid question like that, you've got you, like, somewhat prepared. Oh, those questions are fine, though. <laughs> I just, yeah. That's a tough one. You've just been doing assignments on uh, gun laws, and um, so your brain yeah. your brain's in a different space right now. Yeah. Well, this is 
I mean, this is welcome. You know, <laughs> I can imagine. This is nice. It's good. Rightio. Well, let's wrap things up. Listeners, you can catch Joey's solo shows when he heads to Australia in Melbourne on Jan 31st at Northcote Social Club. Adelaide at the Crown and Anchor on February 1st, the Crowbar in Sydney on February 2nd, and Brisbane on February 9th at the Black Bear Lodge. I am not going to list off the dates and locations for the Gimme shows because there are fucking heaps of them. Right. <laughs> so everyone, you've all got the Googling skills. You can sort it out yourselves. Uh, thank you so, so much for hanging with me today, Joey. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this was fun. We're looking forward to having you back in Australia after Christmas. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Me too. And I might see you up on stage in Melbourne. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. <laughs>